Thank you, Governor Dukakis. Uh, certainly to your team as well. Thank you for the kind invitation this morning. Great to see uh, everybody out. Uh, I do have uh, some comments, uh, both around uh, the G7 summit that's going to take place this year and, and Canada's priorities. Uh, also, I'll uh, reflect a little bit of uh, meetings that have just been taking place over the last couple of days. Uh, before I begin, though, I, I do want to uh, say that all Canadians were horrified by the attack that took place in Toronto two days ago. Uh, at the same time that the G7 foreign and security ministers were meeting in the city, our thoughts and prayers are with those killed and injured and their families and friends who have to endure with the aftermath. Um, certainly, uh, violence uh, in its many forms uh, is not uh, immune to any uh, nation or community. Summits are first and foremost about the world economy. Canada's G7 summit in Charlevoix next month is no different. We all know the G7 is not a supranational government, but it's an opportunity for the leaders of the leading advanced economies to meet face to face in an informal setting. They can agree to coordinate action to promote economic growth and agree on commitments and approaches to address global problems. Finally, as countries that embody like democratic values. This is a chance to address challenges to these values wherever they may occur. The primary focus of the G7 meetings is the economy. However, that word means so much more today than it did 25 years ago. New technologies and business models disrupt and turn upside down the economy jobs, people's lives, and society. I need hardly to point out that the Boston Innovation Ecosystem right here is the epicenter of this economic and social transformation. Many over the past few years have expressed concern over the negative effects of the proliferation and expansion of new technologies on our economic and social fabric including the best minds here at Harvard and at MIT. They have acknowledged the enormous benefits, but they're concerned with the potential that the rap rapidity of social and economic change was outstripping our ability to adapt and manage the consequences. In my former life, I was uh, premier of a province. It would be like uh, Governor Baker here in Massachusetts. And, one of the things that I often said in a very simplistic way is governments are used to dealing with this, uh, things at the speed of sound, or is the world is traveling at the speed of light today? And the reality that makes uh, uh, the regulatory perspective uh, very difficult to keep pace with the innovation that's taking place. We now face the reality um, of non-state actors, transnational crime, and some countries such as Russia, uh, having exploited the new tools and platforms to undermine the very foundation of our democratic societies. But there's no point wringing our hands over this. We have to address the issue and propose measures. The G7 Foreign and Security Ministers meeting in Toronto just finished yesterday. The ministers issued the Toronto Commitments, which include a statement on defending democracy, addressing foreign threats. I would encourage you go to, to go to Canada's G7 website to look at the specifics around it. In the closing statement, the ministers reinforced that robust democratic institutions as strong rules-based international order and respect for diversity create the best conditions for growth for everyone. The ministers reaffirm their belief in open economies, open societies, and open governments in which inclusion, respect for diversity and human rights, and growth for everyone are valued. 
The Toronto commitments set out the problem and propose a series of measures to address the um, uh, what amounts to an enormous and complicated cybersecurity problem. The G7 ministers characterized the problem bluntly as a strategic threat to our society. The Toronto commitments suggest cybersecurity measures that commit to addressing the impact on de democratic uh, processes and institutions from foreign actors seeking to undermine them. Disinformation and media and the media, such as attempts to uh, sow hatred and manipulate social discourse, and the actions of foreign actors using new technologies to suppress human rights, democracy, and fundamental freedoms. The do do document, excuse me, also contains a number of strategies to reinforce society's defense and resilience against these threats, including the need for governments, civil society, and the private sector to work closely together. The ministers also addressed the security threats posed by foreign terrorist fighters and associated travelers in Syria and Iraq who seek to return to their country of origin or other countries and made a number of key commitments to deal with these threats. There's another reality of G7 economic summits. When the leaders of the free world gather, pressure builds to take advantage of everyone being at the same place at the same time to discuss international uh, political and security issues at the very highest level. This is a good and necessary uh, opportunity so long as it do, does not dilute the focus of the summit. At the Toronto G7 meeting, foreign and security ministers were able to cover a great deal of ground before the Charlevoix summit. In addition to the cybersecurity and foreign terrorist fighters, they dealt with everything from Ukraine to North Korea, to the Middle East, to China, to people trafficking, to violent extremism and terrorists who use the internet and much in between. So let's return to the Charlevoix summit where Canada uh, is chair and has set forward five priorities. They include investing in inclusive growth, supporting middle-class jobs, ensuring progress is shared by everyone and addressing gender inequality. Advancing gender inequality and the empowerment of women and girls as part of reducing poverty and growing the economy. Thirdly, preparing jobs for the future, a critical task as disruptive technologies change rapidly the economy and society. Citizens need to benefit properly from these advances. Fourthly, addressing climate change, the oceans and green energy with global solutions and a low carbon future. And finally, building a peaceful and more secure world, supporting a rules-based international order built around core principles of democracy, human rights, the rule of law, territorial integrity, and the aspiration to free and open trade that benefits all, not just the wealthiest. I want to make two observations on Canada's priorities uh, for the G7. All of the priorities are interconnected. We cannot make progress in one without making progress in all. What is the use of economic growth if our open democratic institutions and free elections are undermined by foreign actors? If we do not spread the economic benefits of our new economy equally to all our people, should we be surprised that citizens become alienated? Also, some have criticized Canada's agenda as promoting values um, in some starry-eyed way irrelevant to hard economic realities. Nothing could be further from the truth. First, values are the fabric of our democratic societies. Do you think it is any co uh, coincidence that the foreign actors who sought to damage our countries focused on un uh, are focused on undermining these values? Second, 
Let's take gender equality. Women represent a critical part of our economy and our workforce. Ask any woman about equal pay and equal opportunity, about breaking in as entrepreneurs, about their place in science, technology, and innovation, and you will hear just how far uh, we still have to come to achieve an equal playing field. Failing to address this is not only wrong, it's uh, and against uh, principles of fair, fairness and justice, it also undermines, in a fundamental matter, our economic objectives. Half of our workforce, with all its economic potential, must be fully integrated as part of this economic change and growth so that everyone can benefit. If I may, I'd also like to close the parenthesis on one of our economic priorities, uh, and that is NAFTA. I was uh, just in Washington yesterday for, for a number of meetings on the Hill, and uh, negotiations at this moment are very intense. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, ministers are now all in Washington, along with their lead negotiators and trade teams. Um, it is our hope that uh, we will find a win-win-win for North America. Canada, the U.S., and Mexico have benefited from NAFTA since 1994. We seek a modernized NAFTA that will support middle-class jobs and result in a progressive agreement that addresses labor and environmental standards, gender and indigenous inclusion, and fair and transparent dispute mechanisms while maintaining North America's global competitiveness. I also want to briefly address AI. Uh, that is, I guess, the, the direct subject of this uh, meeting today. Canada is a world leader in the field of AI and hosts to globally recognized AI researchers, institutions, and startup companies. Montreal is the home of Element AI, dealing with big data industries. The city also has one of the largest concentrations of AI scientists and deep learning researchers at the Montreal Institute for Learning Algorithms. Edmonton has the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute and a Google DeepMind office. SciFar, the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, was selected by the Government of Canada to lead the 125 million pan-Canadian artificial intelligence strategy, working in partnership with the centers in Montreal and Edmonton and the Vector Institute in Toronto. Canada's objectives in AI are to increase the number of outstanding artificial intelligence researchers and skilled graduates in Canada, to establish interconnected nodes of scientific excellence in Canada's three major centers for AI in Edmonton, Montreal, and Toronto and to develop global thought leadership uh, on the economic, ethical, and policy and legal implications of advances in artificial intelligence. And finally, to support a national research community on AI. Prime Minister Trudeau is looking forward to the discussions with the other G7 leaders in Charlevoix on what promises to be a focused agenda on critical economic and political issues. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here. I certainly am looking forward to uh, participating today uh, and hear, hearing from the, the global leaders who are here today.